My name is Aaron Badley, and I lead driver operations, drive testing at, at Mapbox. Uh, today, I want to talk a little bit about our experience drive testing the navigation product across the globe. Uh, we've driven uh, quite a few miles, quite a few kilometers, and there's some stories to share. So a quick overview, we'll talk about OSM data and how Mapbox navigation works with that data. Drive testing as a program, as a service, and uh, the experiences we've had there. Navigation in general and what we're looking for in that experience. The feedback insights and what that means for us at Mapbox and our customers. So it goes without saying, but road data is a basic building block. It's a, an essential component of navigation. Without it, we can't really build a route without knowing where the road is, what the name is, maybe uh, how many lanes there are. It's very difficult to know how to build a route. Further, it's, it's more important to have accurate, recent, and complete data. We use OSM uh, data to help people, packages, and vehicles move all over the globe. Data matters, and, and that's, that's true for, I think, everyone in this room, and I think that's why we're all here. Just a quick snapshot of, of how we think about the, the different data sources. We collect information, insights, uh, data from various sources. And one of the most integral pieces, again, is the OSM data. That's this bottom one here. They come together in this stack that is, is pretty magical, in my opinion. It's beautiful. Uh, we have all these different sources coming together to create APIs, SDKs, applications. And ultimately, we need to evaluate them and see how they're, they're performing. And that's where we come in, this very end, drive testing. So we developed and we have an internal product, an internal app that we use for testing, for testing purposes, for all of these components and all of these different layers and data pieces coming together. In fact, we have a dedicated drive testing team at Mapbox, which is fairly unique. We're constantly testing all of those components. Every single week, we're doing hundreds and hundreds of use cases, driving hundreds of, of kilometers to see how we're, how we're doing. I was performing. And periodically, we travel to key geographies to see how we're performing in that particular region. Maybe it's Italy, maybe it's Brussels, uh, maybe South America. Um, there is no substitute for that ground truth validation for when rubber hits the road, uh, pun intended. Just a quick snapshot of, of the last two years of, of what this program has been able to do. Um, this is separate from all of the, the different customers we might have using Mapbox navigation as a product. This is a completely separate figures here, but we've tested in 30 countries, um, well over 33,000 navigation sessions. That's from when you begin a, a route, begin a trip, all the way to the end. Driven over 650,000 kilometers, over 18,000 hours. We've released 100 different versions of the internal testing app and generated uh, the very specific number, 11,756 feedback items. And so this, this program that we have is, is unique, again, and we've generated a lot of, of feedback as part of it. So let's talk real quick about the, the navigation experience. You see this user flow all the way um, from when someone opens the app or opens any, any customer application all the way to when they close it. That's the navigation flow. And we're collecting feedback along the way um, maybe they're just, the app is open, the location shows where the, the person is on the map, and they're driving. They search for destination, begin the route, they arrive at the destination, maybe provide some, some feedback about how the trip was, and then close this, the, that session. That flow all has different layers and different insights that we can glean from the, the experience most of which comes in this, this center section, active navigation. There's so many things that can go right and wrong about active navigation. And we rely on the data to make sure that is a high quality experience consistently uh, and, and regularly across the different applications. So imagine you're, you're on a, a trip and uh, a route, and it's a, it says turn left, and you can't because it's a one way, or you can't because the road is too narrow to pass. Those are all, uh, they're all bad experiences, let's be frank. And so those are the kinds of things that we 
manually collect insights about and then uh, understand how we're performing in any given geography uh, for any given product or, or hardware. So here's some, some sample uh, GIFs of, of different on the road from the driver's seat angles um, in both Canada and in Europe. Our drive testing team drove uh, quite a bit over a 45 day period um, over these, these different geographies. It's an impressive work when, when we're talking about a very limited size of team, but targeted testing, uh, very intentional about where we're driving, how we're driving, what kind of insights we're trying to collect, and where. So here's, here's an example. Uh, in, in Verona, and we talked about one which is fairly, these two um, screenshots on the right <clears throat> show the original route, what we wanted to, uh, the driver to take versus what the actual route was. And the difference there is just a little tiny one-way road that they couldn't route down. This is a tiny example of the thousands and thousands of trips that we've taken, um, but it's impactful. And so this leads to, uh, goes to our team, they review it and uh, eventually make a contribution. Another example, a narrow road. Again, we have the original route that was recommended, the actual route taken, and you can see that um, there's actually a U-turn on the bottom one. They, they're going down the, the road, they ultimately couldn't make it past because it was too narrow, they had to turn around, and here's a screenshot of the app, of what it showed at that, that particular time. It's a little different, but speed limits are very important for a number of reasons. We display them, um, current speed versus a speed limit for a road segment, and if they're incorrect, that's a, a poor experience. And so we did a test. Um, we did 500, give or take, uh, kilometers in, in Brussels, and we wanted to see how accurate we were. Roughly 10% of them were either incorrect speed limits or missing altogether. Um, so this is another indicator of, of the quality of the, the trip experience in a particular uh, geography. So we're, my team is in the business of, of generating feedback. Feedback comes in in the form of manually entering it through the UI. Maybe it's through trace data, telemetry. Um, we collect feedback about the experience in a number of different ways. This uh, pie chart to the right is just a tiny example of, of the, the kind of breakdowns we might see and look at for a particular geography. This one was from early testing, early route testing in Italy. Some of these um, issues that we encounter are, they're not unique to a particular region. Maybe this is happening in Italy and all throughout Europe. Maybe there's a specific data issue that we're experiencing. You can see that breakdown on, on these pie charts. We have 50, 46 feedback categories that we can classify and organize and aggregate the different types of experiences that people have uh, as they're testing, and so we know how we're performing in, in any given geo. Here's a, a snapshot, an example of a scorecard that we might create after um, one such test. So on the two different axes, we have <coughs> road features that uh, drivers have reported issues with or their experience given a score uh, out of five and then the comparison of city by city so Netherlands Spain France and Belgium Italy they're all in the, in Europe but they might have different issues that they're experiencing or different things that we need to pay attention to in this case clearly Italy had some some things we needed to address and um, the two largest contributors were turn restrictions and speed limits. Again, this is just one example of, of many types of um, reports that we can create through our drive testing efforts. And further, that scorecard is, is good because we can see quickly, okay, Italy's here and we need to pay attention, but if we're drilling down a level deeper, we need to know how we're performing very specifically within subgeos or quad keys, however you want to break it down. And this is another example of establishing trip quality. This is in, in Detroit, but this kind of um, analysis can be generated for wherever we're, we're testing at a given time. So we cluster and group them to help us know where and how to dig a little bit deeper. So what does this mean? It's cool. We're driving all over the place uh, a lot. And it's interesting. 
But what does this lead to? More directed driving, more targeted, specific driving in different areas lead us to be able to make improvements, to tune <clears throat> how we're performing. This is an example chart of, of how ETA has improved over time as we updated um, different components in, in Europe. Where it all comes together is we want to con uh, make a consistent experience regardless of where you're at, where your location is, you know, the hardware you're using, or the customer that is using the product. Continuous testing really means continuous insights. And those continuous in insights lead to continuous improvements to the navigation experience. Um, and here's just a little sneak preview of what this means for us uh, moving forward. Navigation is, is a building block. It's a building block to other, um, other products, other services, and features. Some of them being augmented uh, reality navigation, EV navigation, EV routes, autonomous, fleet, and logistics. All of these come together in, uh, as, in a concert. Um, how they're built from that navigation experience matters as we build other products and, and really hone in and nail the basics with our, our navigation. That's it. Thank you.